Hi, this is Andrew Smith, instructor at Fair State University and runner of ArtbySmitty.com. This is part two of the asset creation tutorial series going over Autodesk's 123D Catch. So why don't you guys go ahead and open up 123D Catch beta. And since we already created our scene last tutorial, we're going to open an existing photo scene. And I'm going to go here into my demo folder and open up our scene. In this tutorial, we're going to go over exporting this this mesh out of Autodesk 123D Catch and bringing it into PixLogic ZBrush uh, and applying texture maps and then retopologizing in a program called TopoGun and reprojecting all of the detail from this mesh that we created using 123D uh, and into a game-ready mesh something that's low poly with with really nice unwrap UVW coordinates. So here is our model. Notice I deleted some more area around the ground uh, just to focus on our object of interest. Next I'm going to say file export scene as and here's your options FBX if you want to bring it straight into 3D Max or Maya or Soft Image uh, but I want it as an OBJ. I will tell it to rename itself as chest and hit save and hit OK and just like that if we open this up and go to photos demo uh, we can see that here it created our OBJ file uh, material file which isn't really necessary uh, and then we also have two texture maps uh, one has certain parts of our chest the other has certain parts of the floor that were captured that we don't really need uh, so this is kind of inconvenient um, if you're working with one object and you want it to be on one texture sheet uh, and you notice each one of these represents a shell in the 3D sp on the 3D model uh, and when I say shell I mean a portion of the mo 3D model unwrapped in 2D space so if you're lucky again you only have one texture sheet with everything on it but in our case we have two which is going to make this process a little bit longer uh, but, but hopefully you have just one uh, but if you have two, we'll go, th go through and show you how to fix this. Okay, I'm going to close 1, 2, 3D Catch, and I'm going to open up ZBrush. Uh, this ZBrush user interface was created by me, uh, and you can get this by going to my website and going to the resource page, and you can download this. It's pretty, pretty nice. I spent some time creating it, and it's pretty nice a lot of people seem to like it so uh, what I'm gonna do now is say import and I'm gonna go find that OBJ file in my chest photos demo that OBJ that we just created and say import and I'll drag click and drag to draw it on my screen I'll hit T or uh, click the edit button up here to go into edit mode uh, right now it's in orthographic so I'll hit P to go into perspective view and I'm gonna enable my skin shader to get a nice white uh, the next step in the process is to load up our textures. So go to texture, import, and pick the first texture sheet. Call that good. Uh, I'm also going to flip it in the V. I'm going to then go to import and grab the second one, open that, and I'll flip that in the V as, to, as well. Uh, okay, so basically if I come down here and go to texture map, and load up uh, one of these textures, you'll notice, yeah, it's texturing part of our mesh um, how we want, but all those other parts um, are getting cut off because those are actually using the second texture sheet, um, which is why I say this is so inconvenient when uh, one Autodesk 123 Catch creates multiple texture files. Um, it would be really, 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 really extremely nice if 123D Catch asked you um, what type of texture format you wanted, what size texture you wanted, and also how many texture sheets that you wanted, but uh, it doesn't at this point, and it's still in beta, um, so we're just going to have to deal with it. So I'm actually going to turn that texture off, and I'm going to come back to my skin shader, and I'm going to come up here and say uh, polygroups, and if I hit shift F, it'll show me wireframe, but polygroups also will be shown in color. And what I want to do now is basically say uh, auto group uh, but everything's all attached to one object so it's going to just color the whole thing but 
Uh, in order to get this mesh separated in those UV shells, we're going to say auto groups with UV. So now it's going to break up all of those different shells that each have a different texture map applied and create them into separate polygroups. Uh, now you can't assign textures to certain polygroups, so what you have to do is come up here to geometry uh, and you have to say, or actually sorry, uh, subtool and you have to say group split and hit OK. And OK, so now what it's going to do is it's going to break up all of our little different shells into their own uh, sub-objects in ZBrush here. And you can tell some of them are extremely small and not very handy. Um, so what I'll do is come in here and I actually have to try and find the big chunks, like say this guy here, and apply textures to these parts individually. So let's go back up to the top, find the front piece, which is up over here, and I'm going to turn off, hit Shift F and turn off uh, wireframe. And so now I can come here and start assigning these different textures, uh, texture maps to individual pieces. And so that front shell obviously had this texture map applied to it. So that's good. Uh, and now I have to come back down here and find uh, another piece, say this corner piece right here, come back down to texture and figure out which texture map belongs to. Obviously it's the second one. And then I basically can hit flat color to kind of view this in real time. So you'll see here like chunks right here are going to be created in their own sub tools, which is kind of annoying. Uh, but you have to go through and assign each subtool its texture. Again, if 123D Catch could just export one texture sheet, this process would be a one click process as opposed to coming up here, finding a subtool, um, going back down here, assigning a texture. Uh, so that's what I'm going to spend uh, the next few minutes doing, and I'm going to speed this process up so you guys don't have to watch this tediousness of this process. Uh, and then once I do that, um, we'll get this I'll, we'll get this texture map crunched down. We'll create a little uh, a game ready or, or new resolution mesh and project all of this into one texture map. So here we go. Okay, for the most part, uh, I have all my textures assigned to these different subtools. Uh, a few of them, like if I were to zoom in really close and see a few of these little polygons here, do not have uh, textures applied to them. It's because they were their own subtools and they're just really too small uh, to care about at this point. You know, you can see one in here. Uh, and I can just take care of those post and Photoshop, uh, just painting using basic colors, but. Uh, the important thing is that all the main objects have this texture on it applied to them. Okay, so what we want to do next, we're applying this texture map into polypaint data on each one of these subtools that I applied color to. So what I need to do is I obviously have this guy selected. We can isolate him and turn everything else off. Uh, and what I need to do is come down here to geometry. Uh, because if we were to come down to polypaint right now and say, uh, Poly paint from texture. Well, I first need to have RGB on and say poly paint from texture. It's going to be very low res like that. Uh, and that's because it paints each polygon with a color. And right now we only have like f a f not very many polygons. So what I need to do is come up here and turn off smooth and control D a few times and then say poly paint from texture and maybe even. Uh, Subdivide that one more time and say poly paint from texture. So now that poly paint information is stored in the mesh 
and actually not in the texture sheet. So I can turn the texture sheet off. Uh, so then I come back up here. I can uh, re unhide everything else and come through and start applying uh, textures into polypaint data for each one of these shells. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do. Let's come down here and do this one more time so you kind of have an understanding of it. Um, let's click on this guy up here, um, the top piece. Hide everything else. And we'll do the same thing for him. Uh, scroll down here. We're going to say, open up the, well, the geometry tab is open. Turn off smooth and sub subdivide this a few times until it, it gets a high enough polygon count uh, that we can actually say polypaint from texture and it applies that, that texture into the polypaint. So now I can come in and turn the texture map off. Okay, come back up here, turn everything else back on and start doing this for each uh, individual part that we have the textures applied to. So again, I'm gonna do this and speed the process up and resume this back when I'm done applying textures in the polypaint data. Okay, so now I have all of my subtools. They all have their polypaint data f directly from the textures. Remember, the, the color on this model right now is not a texture sheet. It's all it's it's created from the texture sheet, but it's all stored in the polypaint data. So now that the the polypaint data is actually applied to the mesh itself, I can come up here and I can say uh, merge visible. And by merging that, uh, it's going to give me my new chest uh, merged uh, all in one subtool with the textures applied straight in to the mesh. And what that does is I can actually hit D. I don't know, it looks like I'm at my I'm around 2 million polygons for this guy. It isn't too bad. And I'm getting a little bit of texture issues here, but I can actually paint those out in Photoshop later. Uh, little dots like that aren't going to cause any distress on my part. So uh, what I'm going to do now is, now that I have my chest here, one piece with textures applied to it, uh, I'm going to say uh, save as, and we're going to save this in the demo folder as chest.ztl or ztool, and hit save. And now I can come and open up this project uh, whenever I want. Uh, and start start playing with it. I can even come in here with, um, you know, actually, let's come down here just to show you what you can do. You can actually start painting. Uh, right now I have a texture map applied, so let's say no texture and paint with a green. I can start painting on the model itself. Uh, or if this was an organic mesh, I could come in with my move brush and, and literally start moving this around a little bit and, uh, you know, giving us some some really cool freedom um, you know, if you want to go out and take a picture of something in real life and then sculpt your own details onto it or shape it how you would like to see it shaped, you know, um, or add some some damage to it, uh, just a great opportunity to use Autodesk 1, 2, 3D Catch and ZBrush uh, all together in one to maybe add some dings and dents uh, into something, make something unique. Okay. Uh, with this saved out as our Z tool, I'm going to say that's it for part two. And part three, we'll go over retopologization of this mesh. Uh, and then probably um, also projecting all this, this detail from this mesh onto our retopologized mesh, including texture maps. Thanks for watching.